There was a quiz show on American television. I don't think it's still on, actually. I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure it isn't. Um, it was hosted by someone called Mary Hall, and the uh, one of the payoffs, uh, a part of it, was that the uh, the player had to choose uh, between one of three doors, and behind one of those doors was a car. And if they picked the right door, they won the car. And if they didn't, uh, behind the other two doors was a goat, I believe. At least that's how it comes down. Uh, so the player would be confronted with these three doors. So say, I'll have door number one. And then, crucially, Murray Hall would say uh, that he was going to pick another door. He would nominate one of the other doors, behind which was a goat. And then he would give the player the opportunity to either stick with the door he originally picked, or else switch to the other um, closed door. Uh, it's not a terribly good description, but there's plenty on the web about it. Uh, but basically, after Murray Hall had eliminated one of the doors, the player had the choice of either staying with the one door that, was, uh, that they originally chosen, or switching to the door that was still closed. And uh, in the hope that either the door they'd already picked or the other door had a car behind it and they'd won the car. Uh, it gets a lot of attention in, on, on the, the web and the mathematical circles because it's, uh, it, pre it presents quite a counterintuitive um, set of probabilities. When you look at the problem, it feels like either staying with the door that you've picked already or switching to the other door is a straight 50-50 choice. It feels like that. But in fact, it isn't. It's, uh, you are much better advised to switch. You have a two-thirds chance of winning if you switch, and only a one-third chance of winning if you stay with the door you originally uh, picked. I don't really have time, or probably the articulation, to explain why that's the case right now, but it's, it's, it's demonstrable mathematically. The reason why I'm mentioning that is I've been thinking about that in relation to Pascal's wager, which is um, a theological bet, if you like, or a theological argument that Blaise Pascal formulated several centuries ago now, and which is often trotted out as a, an, an argument for faith, an argument for religious, religious belief. And basically all Pascal's wager says is that there's either a God or there isn't, that's what he says. If there is a God and you believe in him, you'll get eternal life, and if you don't, you won't. Simple as that. If there isn't a God, then the whole thing doesn't apply. So what Pascal says is that given that situation, it's better to believe in God, because you've got everything to gain and nothing to lose, or, or very little to lose. Probably some time or something like that in your day, but that's about it really. So you've got everything to gain, if you're right, and there's a God, eternal life. Uh, if you're wrong, there isn't a God, nothing's lost. That's the idea. Uh, and there's huge problems with that, of course, which again, I don't really have time to go into now. But I think it might be interesting just to think what happens if you combine what's sometimes called the Murray Hall problem and uh, Pascal's wager, what you might call uh, Murray Hall's wager. I'm replacing the three doors with the three Abrahamic religions. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. Uh, and so you've played this game, you've been involved in this game somehow, and you, at the end of it, you're, you're confronted with these three doors, behind one of which is eternal life in paradise, and behind the other two is the goat of damnation, and you get to pick. So you pick one of these three doors, or more likely your parents pick it for you when you're too young to make a choice yourself. But either way, you pick the door, let's say you pick the one that's not Christianity. <laughs> Dog coming. Oh, hello. How's he get on? Come on, Phoebe. Come on, Phoebe, go on. That's it, good girl. I'm be a bit careful around that one because uh, my female dog, Phoebe, had a romantic liaison with one of those dogs not too long ago. Um, where was I? Oh yeah, so Mary Hall's wager. So you pick one of these three doors, let's say you pick the one marked uh, Christianity. 
which means there are other two doors left. There's still one marked Judaism, and there's still one marked Islam. And you're still not absolutely sure where life is, where the last thing is, and where the two goats are. So we have to get a substitute for Murray Hall in this imaginary scenario. So let's say Murray Hall is played by your vicar, or your priest, or your pastor, or your, uh, your imam, or your um, pope, or something. Some representative who claims to know it's about. And uh, you ask him to dismiss one of the other two doors. You tell him, if I had to, you know, which one of these religions is the least, is the most false? Let's say you're Christian, you say to your vicar, which one out of um, Judaism and Islam is the least true? Which one of these is most likely to, to condemn me to purgatory? And let's say he says Judaism. Well, following the logic of the Murray Hall problem, what you should do at that point, of course, is immediately switch to Islam. You should become a Muslim. It's the only thing that makes sense. Because you've got a much better chance of life everlasting if you switch at that point than if you stay to being a Christian. And the same would apply if you originally picked the door marked Islam and you went to your uh, Imam and asked him which of these particular bunches of heretics are the most reprehensible, the Jews or the Christians. If you said Christian, then you should become a Jew immediately. You've got a much better chance of making it. And of course, the same thing applies to the third one on the list. Or of course, you could just um, recognise the thing after the fact that you're just on a bloody game show. Not take it too seriously.